the latest in a long line of sleazy stories from Westminster. Yes, it's yet another one, isn't it? This is now the fifth Conservative sex pest story in just three months. We're literally a week after two by-elections, which were triggered by one Conservative MP watching porn in the House of Commons and one Conservative MP um, being found guilty of sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy. Also, of course, there is the unnamed Conservative MP who has been told not to come into Parliament because he's alleged to have raped somebody. And then also the whip's been taken from David Warburton um, over multiple allegations of sexual misconduct. So it does feel much like the 1990s when John Major's government and all the sleaze scandals. It's not a problem that affects only the Conservatives, of course, but it does feel at the moment like it is a real issue for them. It's interesting to see what exactly is going on in this case, particularly looking at the, the Carlton Club where this, was, uh, where, where this took place last night, I, I, or, or the night before, I should say. Uh, the Carlton Club is sort of the, 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 the holy sanctimony of, of Toryism. It's where the 1922 committee was founded. It's where a lot of MPs go to sort of relax after a long day in Parliament. Um, what does it tell us that this is what's going on in sort of that bastion of Toryism? It is, isn't it? And it's very much, you might think, a sort of safe space for Conservatives, but it hasn't proved to be the case because, in fact, these complaints came from Conservative MPs and staffers that were there that witnessed this and thought, this is not on, and then went to the whip's office and said... And then Chris Heaton Harris, the chief whip, spoke to Chris Pincher about what had happened and the decision was made that he would have to resign. Now, I think the line from number 10 that came out last night saying, uh, he said sorry, he's learned his lesson, no further investigations needed. Um, how long realistically is that going to hold? Of course, Labour are saying he should have the whip taken away. So the Lib Dems, of course, Ellie Reeves, Shadow Justice Minister on our channel earlier, mm -hmm. saying the Conservatives are mired in sleaze. But also with the Conservative Party, there are many, many unhappy MPs saying we need to act, at least suspend the whip now, mm -hmm. temporarily remove him from the Conservative Party mm -hmm. till we get to the bottom of this. And I think questions too, obviously about the wider culture in Westminster, but also about Boris Johnson's judgment about having given him this role in the mm -hmm. first place. He was only appointed to it in February. But of course, he had a role in the whip's office back in 2017. And he had to resign then because of allegations that he basically um, made a pass at somebody inappropriately. Now, I think it's important to say that he was cleared then. Mm. But there's reports today that multiple Conservative MPs uh, knew about his behaviour. In fact, it's reported that he had a minder who was supposed to go out with him on nights out to make sure that he didn't drink too much and behave badly. Quite where that person was on Wednesday night, I'm not sure. But it seems Chris Pincher was one of the MPs who really did rally round Boris Johnson mm. after their own Patterson uh, debacle. When he, he, things started to go wrong and with Partygate, he really did help to shore up support for the Prime Minister. And so the Prime Minister feels very loyal to him. Yes, it's interesting, that shadow whipping operation that sort of ran to keep the Prime Minister in place as all the Partygate stories were breaking. He was a very key figure in that. It's interesting, though, listening to Simon Hart this morning, uh, speaking to us and indeed other broadcasters, when, um, when Simon Hart said that this was a story that only broke late last night. The government hasn't yet got all the facts in front of us. Almost making the case that, or opening the door to the case, that this might be something that moves further, that the whip may be suspended later on. It looks like things are moving in that direction. It does. It does. And I mean, obviously, the last thing that Boris Johnson would want at the moment is another by-election. Uh, this is the MP for Tamworth. He's been in in office since 2010. He has a majority of, I think, just under 20,000. It'd be fascinating and uh, really not what Boris Johnson would like to see. But again, can he resist the pressure? Mm. Boris Johnson's just come back from striding around on the global stage. He's very keen to talk about the issues that matter to people, cost of living, what the government is doing to help them. Mm. Instead, here we are again talking about bad behaviour in Westminster, so much as they would like this to go away, mm. I suspect it won't go away, possibly until action is taken. No, really interesting stuff there, especially given that Chris Pincher was 
a, a whip, very senior in, in this organization of whips that is supposed to keep behaviors, uh, MPs' behavior in check. Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess, finally, what does this say about the structures within Parliament to deal with people who behave badly if, if the people who are running those structures are also behaving badly? Yes, it, it is quite incredible, isn't it? Because the whips are there to discipline and they're supposed to make sure that MPs are behaving properly themselves. They also, of course, know everybody's secrets. It seems that quite a lot of people knew about Chris Pincher's uh, secrets as well. So it it is quite astonishing. And although the, the independent complaints and grievance scheme is now up and running, which is supposedly going to help people who feel they've been victimised in some way, treated badly. Mm. The proper procedures are in place, but I think there is a long way to go. Westminster is a very curious workplace mm. and, and a very intense one.